Hi, it's Richard here from Intelligent Advisor IT Consulting with another in our periodic uh, video series about JavaScript extensions. This week we're going to look at search extensions, which occupy a unique uh, position in the uh, family of extensions in that they don't really behave in the same way as most of the others. Before we get stuck into search extensions, let's take a step back and say, what is a JavaScript control extension in Oracle Intelligent Advisor? It's really simple. It's one or, or more uh, JavaScript files added to your project. These files conform to a specification laid down by the Intelligent Advisor a JavaScript extension API. And essentially, they represent objects. And those objects have one or more properties or keys that you can think of, um, if you like, as events. So there might be, for an input control, there's an, an event called mount, which you can think of as the initialize event. And there's another event, a key called unmount, which you can think of the end of life. There are other uh, different keys depending on the object type. For example, you might come across the validate uh, event uh, key or the set instance key or the commit key or the search key. So what do they represent? They re represent, in one word, places where you can write code to modify the behavior of the control. So if you write code in the, in the mount, for example, you would be writing code to initialize perhaps a input box or a button or something visual. If you wrote code in the validate, key for an input, you would be validating the input made by the user, and so on. So there are fairly simple and strict rules as to what you would be writing in any given key, because it doesn't make sense to write code in the wrong place. But uh, once you've got that down, it's really quite simple, because you write code appropriate to the event. So in our case, if we're going to use an, a custom search, well, there's going to be a search key, and we're going to, in that search key, describe the external API that is going to provide the results of the search, for example. At the same time as writing this kind of code, we are free to leverage standard JavaScript within those events, and we are free to use the other objects and methods provided by the API. So we can use, in most cases, the interview object or the control object in order to uh, obtain information about the way our control is executing or the particular interview that we're currently executing in. Over and above these basic concepts, there are strict rules as to what you should and shouldn't do with these extensions. We're looking to enhance the usability and the user experience. We're cosmetically or graphically changing how our control behaves. We are not changing the fundamental way the inference engine, the, the determination engine, and the whole interview experience works. Uh, for more information as to what those rules are, you can consult the Oracle Intelligent Advisor online documentation. How do you get started? And this is true not just for search extensions, but for any extension. Well, you can either build your own collection of templates through experience. You create essentially standard code that you can reuse. And you don't have to, because you can also use a code generator, which I'll show to you at the end of this presentation. And of course, whatever you're doing, make sure that you've added enough logging in there so that when things go wrong, you have some idea of what's going on, because we're going to be able to look at the JavaScript console and see at least uh, some feedback from your extension. So custom search. What is custom search? Well, custom search is a very specific uh, extension, unlike almost all the others because it has none of the standard events or keys. It doesn't have mount, it doesn't have unmount, which you would typically use to render and then remove whatever content you put on the page. And it doesn't have validate or update. So it doesn't let you validate what the user is typing and doesn't react to updates elsewhere in the interview. So what is there? Well, there are only two. There's search and commit. The search is the equivalent of the mount. This is where you would build the user experience. But the user experience in this case, you're not going to be writing any HTML. You're not going to be using jQuery in most cases to do anything visual. You're going to be specifying where the search API is and how the response from the search API will be handled. 
So a basic search demonstration. Here you can see we have three attributes on screen. The first one has a custom property, and that is going to be where the end user will search for a train station by typing in the first few letters of the name of a train station and then getting a list to pick from. The other two prop attributes that you can see on this screen are going to be populated through the choice of station from the external REST API. So let's go and have a look at how this might work. So there's our UK train station attribute, and these are our two supplementary attributes that we're going to uh, populate as well. So as standard, I've added a property to this control, and then in the code, I pick up that property, and I have a search key, which is going to allow me to specify the URI of the REST API, and I'm going to perform a pretty standard AJAX call, AJAX call, adding any headers that I might need, and of course this will be API specific. Then I'm retrieving data from the API, and I am parsing that data. So the data will be in JSON format, and I am splitting it out into two key elements, the text and the value, which are two properties of an object that I must populate. And then I'm turning it into an array because the Intelligent Advisor API expects me to hand back an array. It's actually an array of objects. And the commit, on the other hand, which you can see here, is where I let the user click on a value and I update the attribute or attributes according to their choice. So let's go ahead and test this. I'm going to enter the first few letters of a train station and there's the results. I select something and the attributes are updated. So it basically amounts to letting the user search. So let's see how that worked in practice. We're going to go into the code over here and I'm just gonna drop a few uh, breakpoints in the processing section. So the successful REST API call. You can see in here that the data object contains a number of members. The members represent, in this case, the results from the search. Now, this will be entirely REST API specific, so you might have to navigate a different data structure from your own REST API. Then I'm pulling out the name of the station, and I am populating an object called um, val with a property called text and a property called value, because that's what the API expects. The API expects an array of objects with a value and a text for each of those objects. You'll notice that I also populate the latitude and the longitude. That's because in this code, the data that is returned from the JSON API JSON has actually got extra values in it. So I am borrowing those values and using them to populate my attributes. Again, this will be entirely REST API specific. So let's take a step back. The search key is essentially initializing the search. And unlike almost everything else that you'll see in extensions, it's pretty much hard coded. So we can't change the delay before the search actually fires, or the number of characters, if you will, that trigger the search. That's all hard coded. If you dig around in interviews.js, you'll find that there's a set timeout, which is hard coded. We can specify pretty much only where the search will occur. So we give a REST API URL, and we then handle that using jQuery or Ajax or whatever you want to do. But we are basically responsible for parsing that search and pulling out data from the JSON returned by the REST API and transforming it into an array of objects where each object must have a text property and a value property. The text property representing the display text and the value property representing the actual value of the element. The commit section is essentially when the user selects something from the dropdown. So it's responsible only for updating one or more attributes in the interview based on what the user has chosen. This is essentially a pick list and then a map so that when I select something in the pick list, data is mapped to attributes. 
So unlike most extensions, we don't have anything to do as far as the end user visual experience is concerned. The control will look just like a normal input until we start typing, and then we will see a dynamic set of choices presented to the user based on the API. So a basic search really is pretty basic. It's just uh, letting the user type a few characters and see a list of choices. As more characters are typed, the search will re-execute and will continue to execute so that the list of choices perhaps is refined and the user can pick from the list. It's essentially a kind of type ahead. What matters for us as developers is we have to execute the search using probably some sort of AJAX call, and then we need to break down the resulting JSON and restructure it to meet the requirements of the extension API. As I mentioned a minute ago, build an array of objects, each with a value and a text property. And as I showed you, if there are any other properties that are returned by your JSON, sorry, by your REST API, well, that's up to you what you want to do with them. And then the second part is when the user selects a value, remember to copy it into the attributes and update any other attributes from properties in the array. So in terms of helper code, um, what I've focused on here is that you're, if you're doing a, a REST API call and you're getting a JSON object, you're going to have some variation on what you can see here. You're going to have a, um, a loop through all the members, all the data objects that have been returned. So in this case, I'm looping through uh, an object data dot member and there are multiple members and I am going through the loop and I am pulling out each time the name property and I am copying the name property into a text and a value property because that's what my API expects. And then I'm transforming that into an array of objects. Notice the callback at the end. This is a mandatory step. This is where you call back to Oracle Intelligent Advisor and say that your search results are ready to be displayed. So in terms of helper, I guess we could say that the most common helper will be jQuery to do the uh, jQuery map to create the array of objects. Other common traps might be, for example, that you realize that the J REST API that you're calling requires headers or requires, uh, for example, in this case, you can see that the structure is different. There's uh, data.items, so in this case, the REST API is returning a different form of JSON. In a sense, it will depend entirely on whatever the REST API is sending you. Which means that the search kind of, yeah, has kind of a few challenges. It's essentially hard-coded as far as layout and implementation is concerned. So you might find yourself thinking that you need a search extension, but ending up with something completely different. For example, if you're asked to validate what the user is entering, for example, don't search unless I've entered uh, a, a valid postcode, uh, don't search until I click a button, or display the results to the left, to the right, above, below, or in another control. No, that just won't work with a search. So in this case, what starts out as looking like a standard search turns into something completely different. In this case, you can see here we have three attributes, a search, an address list with a dropdown, and a Boolean. And essentially, this first control is the search. The second control is just a trigger to display the address list when the search is complete. Let's take a little more, a little look at that. So this is the place where the actual uh, extension is housed. Let's go and have a look how it works. So I enter some text. And instead of it happening automatically, I have a button. If I don't enter in the right format, nothing happens. And when I enter in the right format, I get the results in a different control. So what does that actually mean for us? It means there are several extensions. The main one being here is not a search at all. It's actually a custom input. And in the custom input, we manage the regular expression because that's where you would expect to find a regular expression. And we also have the search, just as you would in a standard custom search with the standard uh, creation, this time, of a options list. So if you've never watched our video about custom options, that's a good time to do it. So the results of the search are dropped into the options dropdown. If you are looking of a way for a way to get started with a custom search or indeed any other kind of extension, 
you can use the Intelligent Advisor IT Consulting code generator, which you'll find in our online store. That'll help you get started. For example, here, to get started with a uh, search, you simply choose search, click next, give a name for your property, choose whether you want to have a console logging, and then we have a number of demo searches that you can pick from, or you can say, no, it's not a demo search, I want to build it myself. So here is my REST API, whatever my URI endpoint, my endpoint is, what kind of uh, verb is it, what data is being retrieved, what attribute am I updating? Where is it coming from? Are there any extra headers or not? And it simply generates the code for you. And you can copy that to the clipboard and you're well on your way to have a functioning custom search extension. So in summary, search extensions are powerful. They're quick ways to integrate external searches into the interview, but because the visual aspect is hard coded, uh, it it means that, well, anything beyond a straightforward display according to the standard layout will probably require an alternative approach. For examples of searches, or indeed for examples of what we just showed you using regex and or uh, custom options and dynamic options, head over to https intelligent-advisor.com and search for examples. We'll see you next time.